What's going on everybody? Perry here, day two, and we're excited because we get to cover how to install the Dauntless floors on my store WF1. Now I know some of you are looking at this hardware right here and being like, well, it kind of looks like it's already done, and you'd be right. We're gonna have to Tarantino this video a little bit because my good friends Kevin and John stopped by over the weekend and helped me do the install. That being said, we're still gonna cover the process of how we measured, how we centered, and how we drilled the holes. So if you wanna build one of these yourselves, you're gonna have that knowledge. So one of the big things we should probably cover is why are we even doing this upgrade in the first place? I've got a perfectly, well not perfectly good, but I've got a floor right here that was on the car, so why do I need to upgrade to this other floor? Well, that's pretty straightforward and simple. The old floor, as you can see, is predominantly just a flat piece with a bit of extraction going on at the back. Whereas the new Dauntless floor, it's a full length tunnel floor. And full length tunnel floors have such an advantage over to your standard flat floors. The big difference is the fact that a tunnel floor actually gets to take advantage of the Bernoulli principle, which is pretty standard and simple when you think about it, but it is counterintuitive. So let's just say you've got air entering the entry point of the floor. Now, a lot of us would think that just by squeezing it down, we would actually increase the pressure, but that's not what happens. This volume of air gets shrunk down and has to work in this smaller space. But to do that, the actual flow needs to accelerate kind of like when you put your thumb over a garden hose. And what that does is instead of increasing the pressure, it dramatically reduces the pressure, creating downforce or a low pressure area. And it's gonna carry that low pressure area underneath the entirety of the floor. On my old floor, we would probably only generate a peak low pressure area in this portion of the floor. So on the Dauntless floor, we're gonna see a low pressure area that starts about here to here, which is a much larger surface area to generate a max low pressure area. So one of the other big advantages to the Dauntless floor over the old floor is the fact that you can see that is one massive piece to put on the car. So even though this Dauntless floor is the same size as far as the actual footprint, this is actually broken into four pieces that I can disassemble. There's only the one central piece that's actually bolted to the frame. Everything else is just kept on by these quarter turn fasteners and the actual stay cables we're going to be putting in the corners. So just to circle back as to why we ended up putting the titanium sheet in my car, well, as you can see, we did a pretty good job of beating up this floor. We've got some massive punches and holes and just all together torn up. So that titanium sheet's going to do a good job of making sure that I'm just extra protected just in case something decides to try to get through the carbon and into my body. So why do we actually go to all that effort to make this little engine plate? Well, this engine plate is gonna be mounted to the frame and actually protect this carbon fiber right here. Because as you can see, this is my old floor and it's actually just cooked all of the resin out of the carbon fiber. And that's just dangerous because the actual resin is flammable. And so we wanna make sure that we're not burning that resin and creating a fire risk. So one of the big reasons I was happy John and Kevin stopped by is they helped me determine what I needed to cut off my frame in order to clearance the floor. It sounds silly, but to replace this actual side pod, you almost would be better off replacing the frame. And that's a $9,000 expense I don't wanna make. So I'd rather have a team of people here to help me make sure we measure once, cut twice. No, measure three times, cut once. One of the things we also did was we actually installed these bars and the car is actually resting on top of these. I know it doesn't look the safest, but we're hoping we're not gonna get any earthquakes. But that allows us to keep this portion of the floor flat with the center section of the floor and flat on the other side, maintaining just a, a flat working surface for us to work off of. So to get started mounting the Dauntless floor to my store WF1, we obviously had to start out with what reference points do we have? Now what we had, and this is pretty much it, 
is we actually have a bolt hole that goes through the front of the actual side pod here and goes into my frame. So what we decided to do was kind of get this laid on top of the actual car and use this as a reference point as to where we are locating the actual floor front to back. And once we got an idea as to where this bolt would go, we tried to get it as far back on the dual layers of carbon as we could. So just to make things easy, we've already trimmed this side pod and we'll show you how we trimmed it later in this video. But you can see that we've got a little bit of a tail edge sticking out, which that's about normal for what you're gonna see doing this actual floor conversion. So now that we've got the measurements front and back, we're gonna actually check how centered it is by measuring off of the main roll hoop and the front roll hoop and matching those numbers side to side. Now why I say side to side is the actual main roll hoop is wider than the front roll hoop, so you will have a different set of numbers for the front versus the rear. I like it, one and one and an eighth. Once you match those numbers, you're gonna run into a little bit of a problem. Because as you can see, we have this bulge here, and this bulge prevents you from just drilling straight down through everything. So what we did was we actually took a Q-tip with some paint on it, dabbed through these holes, and that gave us a template that we could go and take the frame off the car and drill down from the top. Here's the Q-tip. Once we used the Q-tip to paint and mark our holes, we actually lifted the frame off and just drilled down through the carbon fiber. So now that we've got the holes drilled from the top, we've got to flip the actual whole floor over and we've got a countersink from the bottom of the car. Upside down. Oh, checking the head diameter. Yeah, if the head, if the head will fit in it. It's usually, it'll, it'll be sunk down. No, no, I, no, I go like that. Okay, it's not enough. I got it. Usually I can see. It's, it's upside down, too. So once we had gotten all the holes drilled and drilled the titanium and then from there gotten it all bolted back on the car, we get to start the really difficult task which is going to be predominant amount of work I get to show you here today. As you can see, here's the actual bolt hole in the frame and here's the actual bolt through the carbon fiber piece. So we are going to have to clearance all of that carbon fiber so that side pod can actually sit down properly on this new floor. So we're going to start cutting at the back clearancing for this back portion right here and then we'll be able to scoot this into its right location and just slowly work on trimming to get the actual front portion of the floor in and down and located onto that actual bolt location.
All right, so we've done our cutting and grinding and we definitely had to cut a little bit more off the tail than I wanted to, but we've at least, as you can see, fitting through the tunnel floor. Most of this actually had to come out because it was just propping everything up. I'm pretty sure most of this will have to go as well, but that's a little bit later. But I definitely screwed up on my template and you can see we've got just a massive amount of actual open space down here. So I'm actually gonna have to go back and reapply carbon fiber there. But I came up with a better idea for the next one that I'm gonna do, and I think it's gonna help out. So what you can see on the front over here is I've already cut the actual inner flange off. So now all I'm gonna be doing is clearancing, trying to allow the actual front portion to fall onto the actual side pod. And I might even start at that front or inner corner and just try to keep seesawing it on the one pivot point that I've got. So as you can see, I've actually got that front location bolt and the stay cable actually in over here. And what I wanna do is at least start clearancing the front so I can get that in as quick as possible because then I just tilt up and tilt down and that's gonna show me where I need to cut and I'll just keep working the cut back along the line. So now that we've got the side pods on, we're gonna try and fit the entire body just to help locate where we're putting the holes for the front stay cables. But to do that, we've also gotta put on the front splitter. So now is a good time for me to show you the differences between the original store WF-1 front diffuser and the new and improved HRP front diffuser that I will be using. As you can see, the old one, it, it's your standard straight across front diffuser, but the actual lower plate doesn't have a lot of actual extraction going on. So this is the actual front splitter I'll be putting on my car once I'm done aligning all the bodywork. As you can see, it's actually got a channel built into it to do the exact same thing that full tunnel work is gonna do, which is actually create that wing profile and create a very effective low pressure area underneath the bottom of the front splitter. The other thing is with this flat splitter, if you put it on the ground, you can stall the front splitter and it can result in porpoising. Whereas with this one, it has these lower edges here. So if I just touch here, it still doesn't stall the majority of the front diffuser. So now that we got the actual side pods bolted on at the front, we've also got our front splitter on and hung. We're gonna grab the center section and the front fenders and see if we can just gently load them onto the car here. So as you can see, the front end doesn't fit too bad. It's definitely not perfect, but I'm not worried about that right now. 
What I am worried about is trying to get some of these body pins into the actual center section and fenders to mount them to the side pods I just put on the car. There it is. So now that we've got the body pinned in at least four places, which is the only amount that I can do right now, now I'm gonna take these actual mounting brackets and clip them onto the floor itself. So now you can see that we have this little recess fastener for my actual ankle cutters and wood blocks. That I need the clearance for, but we're gonna be using the center hole to run to the stay cable that's gonna be mounted up here. So what we're gonna do, just use my little paint technique. I'm gonna use uh, Q-tips with paint on them, and then I'm also gonna trace this outer perimeter. All right, so that's gonna about wrap up our day. I'm gonna continue it here in a little bit because tomorrow we're gonna still have to do a lot of cutting to the actual carbon floor that we've installed. I know we've got the side pods on, but we've gotta actually put clearances for the front suspension. There's one suspension bolt we have to put through. There's a recess here in this outside portion we'll have to do. Plus we have to completely go through the engine's diaper or the fourth piece of my floor and start marking out where we're gonna cut the recesses there to allow the lower control arm, the push rod, a little bit of the upper control arm, and the drive axles to actually come out of that part. So there's a decent amount of cutting to be done, and that's all what we're gonna be doing tomorrow. But for now, we've got the body on, or at least resting on the car. We've located it, both with the side pods and the anchor points for the front fenders here on the leading edge of the floor. And all in all, I'd say it was a pretty darn successful day. So that's gonna do it for the install here today. If you can, hit that like and subscribe button. It's gonna keep us going, and we'll be able to see you guys in the next video, round three, with the cutting and trimming we still have left to do. For now, aloha and mahalo.